Anita. Hello. Today we'll talk about the do's and don'ts of product development. And to make it a bit more, I don't know if it's difficult, but maybe um, concrete, let's say I'll play the devil's advocate, sort of, and I'll okay. ask questions from the, the client's perspective. Worst possible client perspective. Worst possible client perspective? No, I'll, <laughs> I'll try to keep it uh, mild, more okay, or less. Maybe, I'm glad. <laughs> m maybe most common problems or okay. uh, uh, suggestions that we may have for, for a client. And uh, um, that's one thing. And the other thing for the listeners, we are going to base this conversation more or less on our mind sellers design uh, process. So we'll go through all the steps and talk about the do's and don'ts at each step of the um, design process. Okay. And uh, if anyone wants to uh, listen to a talk about the, our design process, I think you had this conversation with Rafał? With Mikołaj. With Mikołaj. Yeah. yeah, great. So everyone go and check that out. Um, and yeah, so let's start maybe even before we get into the process. Um, in general, R&D and industrial design are very complex, right? True. They have a lot of stages, a lot of iterations, a lot of things are, are dependent on a lot of circumstances and people. So as always with such a complex process or system, a lot can go wrong, True. right? So um, let's, uh, let's start with a general idea of how we can minimize the risks when even approaching on co or considering um, developing a, a new product? Um, basically, the whole idea behind creating uh, organized design process uh, mm -hmm. comes from uh, the fear of uh, failing or maybe uh, making some mistakes along the way. Because as you mentioned, the implementing new product to the market yeah. is a very complex, very costly and takes a lot of time. and. Uh, cutting that whole long process into small, more manageable pieces mm. uh, helps us a lot uh, when it comes to organizing your work even. Yeah. So it's not only um, for our clients to understand how we work and how we create and uh, then engineer those uh, designs, but also for us to um, more easily work on, on, on the project. Sure, but let's say I'm considering contacting you about developing a product and before if I, I even do that, uh, what should I bring to the table to, um, to try to avoid any, you know, um, challenges that may appear on the very beginning? Okay, when we are starting at the idea level uh, yeah. and we build on that, it is good that uh, this idea is really well described. Uh, it doesn't have to be um, a brief already, but... Yeah. Um, it is good to have um, maybe use case scenarios, maybe the um, purpose of that thing that we will create. And then we, this is the basically conversation starter for us to maybe go towards the uh, pre-design phase and to gather more information and collect more, okay. uh, more data. So I, should be, I shouldn't be vague and I should be as precise as possible with what I want to achieve. Yeah. But like... I'm, I'm the med scientist slash inventor. So, uh, you guys are the R and D and the development process uh, team. Um, so, uh, is it like I can come to you and say, oh, I want this blue stick that will write on paper with uh, black color, let's say, okay. or do I need to say it needs to be uh, like uh, five inches long? It needs to have a cap on it and uh, I need to be able to sell refills or whatever. How, okay. how precise do I need to be to start a conversation? Mm -hmm. You can be as precise as in the first example you've mentioned, because um, they, then we will ask you questions about functionalities, for example, because you trust us that we will uh, deliver the, yeah. our work and we trust you that you will tell us all we need to know to uh, make as good uh, design as you want to, as possible. Mm, also, the, some, the thing that um, always uh, helps us to work, but it's not uh, really very uh, 
technical. Yeah. It is a, a drive of our client. Is it a, a, a drive okay. of our client? For example, if it's a company that delivers the medical products, or maybe this is the company from more le le leisure or mm -hmm. entertainment industry, or maybe this uh, object dedicated to educational purposes. So because sort of understanding why even the product yeah. needs to come to where life. the idea came from yeah. because uh, this is uh, usually uh, shows us uh, where our client looks in what direction yeah. it looks okay. and wants to d develop yeah sure um, okay so uh, let's say that I did my homework I tried to be as specific as possible I don't have a brief yet but I came prepared I have some prints I have maybe like a a very simple mood board of what I'm looking for and uh, and we decided to work together so what would be the uh, the first step and what should we be on the lookout for mm, okay so uh, I believe that we are uh, entering the pre-design phase so we are uh at the end of that phase, we will have uh, a brief that will be for us designers set in stone and will be set of directions um, regarding how we should work or design. And this is the time that uh, we should never let any unknowns at this point and any last minute changes should be applied. So when you are not sure about uh, budget on the final you can have for the final product, this is the time that you should settle up or at least have some uh, Mm, some idea mm -hmm. regarding the uh, the costs. Um, this is the time also when we are lining up the priorities. So uh, we are asking our client what is most important. Mm -hmm. Is it economical factor? Is it the ergonomical factor, for example? Because the ergonomics will be different. Uh, you design differently. For example, the sensor of a smart city system that is rarely touched and rarely dismantled. And you design differently the, uh, for example, wearable electronics that will uh, help you to monitor your health. So this, uh, these are the um, different stuff that uh, lining them up and uh, thinking of what, which of them is most important uh, helps us as well. Um, another thing is uh, talking a little bit about the scope of production that is planned or the budget we have, because this is the um, a very strong direction for us uh, in the in the studio to um, think about the future technology of production because we will know okay. uh, and that technology will influence the way we design because we design differently wooden objects yeah, and sure. differently the injection molding mass produced uh, so things. one thing is what I would like my product to be made of and another thing is what my budget allows to plan for. Yeah, exactly. And uh, another thing more from the humanities side of the design, I would say, would be also uh, trying to get to know a visual language of uh, our client's company. Yeah. Uh, because we work differently uh, trying to uh, suit already existing line of products in with a company that's already been on the market for a long time and had customers mm -hmm. and we will definitely uh, plan the design for products that uh, will be first step towards uh, being a successful company so uh, if I understand correctly if I don't need to have like a brand book brand yeah. book or corporate identity or whatever uh, we can start with something that is not yet described yeah we can but uh, but it's definitely something we should discuss like yeah. what's uh, what's the general direction or uh, what's the idea behind the yeah, visual okay. aspect okay um so um what would be uh, the things that uh, uh, i should um, avoid doing or, or or what are the don'ts of this stage um Believing that we will guess correctly <laughs> what you are planning us to, to design yeah. because some clients uh, have that fear of uh, maybe uh, Showing when they show us uh, the for example some mood board or mm -hmm. different products that they like that we will Blindly follow in that direction and almost copy okay. what we've been shown. This is absolutely not the case. It's the opposite It helps us to read the, um, the whole vibe. I would say mm -hmm. on the aesthetics that uh, it's demanded from us Okay. So uh, not mind reading, just you know, so, ex exchanging some. <laughs> yeah. So I'm. Uh, some so examples is better. Always. I shouldn't expect that um, 
uh, one thing that you will copy something that that I brought up in the mood board, and the, another thing is that uh, uh, the, the 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 first proposition will be a 100% hit. Right? Yeah, that's uh, that's rarely the case, but uh, yeah, okay. we want to be as close to the hitting as possible. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, but still, this is an early stage, so right. I assume I won't be uh, able to, I don't know, answer all the questions or you won't have all the uh, uh, answers and I maybe won't be able, even, even able to ask all the questions. Uh, so is it possible to start with, like, I don't know, a general basic uh, uh, concept work and then leave the details for later or how much do we need to describe now? Uh, I think we need to describe as much as possible and if we're not sure about the precise technological uh, solutions behind some of the details, uh, we should at least know that the details will be wanted in the future product. So like, I, I don't know, um, even um, such qualities of water, as waterproofness can influence yeah. the, uh, the design uh, in matter of size, in matter of looks and uh, separating the whole case casing for uh, different house, for example. Mm -hmm. So um, even though we don't have a perfect technical solution during the, the uh, conceptual phase, mm -hmm. we need to know about the functional demands that are uh, in that product. Okay, so uh, I should definitely state uh, all the most important and basic functions um, and uh, try to be as specific about them as uh, as possible. Yes. I imagine if I, at this stage, at the pre-design stage, I wouldn't uh, tell you that I want the device to be waterproof, and I would tell you that like two stages later, yeah, that, that would be a problem. That would be a very a very big and time-consuming and work-consuming pivot in the project. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, what's the end of the uh, uh, pre-design phase? Uh, what does it end with? Actually, in our process, each phase ends up with uh, measurable uh, yeah. outcome, okay. and the outcome of the pre-design phase is a brief that will be brief and specification okay. that describes all the functionalities, demands. But I was supposed to sort of come with some sort of brief or fill the brief at the beginning. So this is like a, a different brief. What is it? Um, so usually uh, that differs because uh, most of our clients are, uh, are not able to come to us with a fully defined technical brief that we need to uh, yeah, okay. to work with. So that's uh, that's why we have the pre-design phase and we uh, ask a lot of questions, meet a few times, and you know uh, gather all the knowledge base to to start. Okay, so sort of the the initial uh, uh, brief that I would I need to prepare is. The sort of more the business side of the product, yeah, the concept, correct, the yeah. general concept side of the product, and I shouldn't like point out exact maybe technologies uh, or uh, ways of production. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly true. Okay, yeah. so once we have the brief that is both uh, from my end sort of uh, focused on the business and the idea of the functions and the form etc and on your end it you you have given it uh, the full technical detail that is possible at this stage mm -hmm. to go and at the next stage prepare the first designs yeah. right Right. Uh, next phase is a uh, conceptual design, and this is the phase when we are building on the brief that have been finished uh, on the phase before, and we are also um, basing on the priorities that have been mentioned before. So we are uh, having our team, we work on our concepts, and we are uh, creating all of the stuff that are necessary to communicate our idea of that product uh, that we will show at the meeting, which is ending that phase. Yeah. So I understand that's the do's be yeah. because um. <clears throat> you will follow the brief the uh, not not necessarily like the technical specs but the the must haves of the brief yeah. and uh, discover maybe i don't know new paths uh, visually um but still i should expect what you deliver to be not outside of the a brief basically that's exactly. why the brief needed to be so specific before right yes so um, um, what would be the uh, on on my side 
or maybe let's go straight to the meeting. Straight to the meeting. Okay. So you have had your time to work on the designs, and what is it that you uh, present, and how we should approach it? Uh, okay, so we are presenting uh, most often uh, three different concepts that are the answer for the brief and all the uh, demands that have been there. And um, this is the first time when we have uh, the visuals we can talk about. Mm -hmm. So it's also a very, uh, very good to have like a feedback session during that, uh, mm -hmm. during that meeting. Uh, but leave the final decision of choosing one of the three ways for a little bit later to, you know, have some yeah. inner <laughs> inner conversation. Yeah. Mm, and um, that feedback is really important because okay. that will uh, be a great use on the a later stage of the project, which is a targeted conceptual study. And that feedback should be really honest and uh, consider all of the, um, not only our personal clients uh, mm -hmm. ideas of that uh, of that product but also the general idea uh, how that product will fit to the organization or company that uh, uh, comes to us for it uh, yeah what, what are the clashes for example because um, you said that we should involve the personal ideas and the and the, the keep in mind the, the company's uh, sort of target but from my own experience, it's like it's hard to um, set aside my own personal preferences or one's own personal mm -hmm. preferences when talking about a design it's that is basically being yeah. made for someone else, yeah. not for me, right? Even if I work at a company that is producing, I don't know, glasses and I like a certain type of glasses, yeah. that doesn't mean that I am the, in the target group of, of my company, right? So how would I separate this? Uh, well, that um, sort of the crowdsourcing is a good idea, as you mentioned. So maybe uh, you, don't, you, you can use the surveys or you can uh, maybe have some targeted group interviews. That's always a very good input and a helpful direction in, in, in choosing one yeah. of the concepts. And this is, this is a purely... Um, a visual phase, graphical phase, right? You you you, you sketch, you do three D models uh, from different perspectives and different settings, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the form that we uh, use as reference for feedback. Uh, yeah, uh, usually yes, uh, because the visual uh, part is always there, but sometimes uh, regarding the uh, aforementioned. Um, hierarchy of priorities, mm -hmm. so what is more important in, in which project. Uh, sometimes we uh, use some very early and crude prototypes. Uh, that's especially very important during the um, projects where ergonomics are really important. Okay. Like for example, when you are um, designing some of a tool that um, should be handheld and should mm -hmm. be very comfortable to use, because sometimes this is the, uh, the point that uh, we make some prototypes to uh, choose the best way, uh, not only regarding the looks, but also regarding the you, future you, use. You mean like when the, for example, the shape is dictated by ergonomics and it's, it's not just a matter of coming up with a shape? But yeah making sure that this will be a practical shape. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Um, okay, so you have shown me this, um, these designs. Um, I know they're, they're the right shape because we did some rough prototyping. Um, and I give you feedback to those designs. Yes. And for example, what what type of feedback do you like to receive uh, like what should what what is good feedback in your opinion well in my opinion good feedback is uh, the one that has some uh, why behind it okay. for example when when talking about colors uh, you can tell me i don't like the color of your design and you can tell me i don't like uh, that blue color of your design i'd prefer it to be pink for okay. example or I don't like that uh, blue color because it doesn't suit my brand book, mm -hmm. etc. Because well, we yeah, have some uh, starting points for a future uh, creative work and for, for maybe uh, making some new propositions regarding that colors. Yeah, okay, okay. But uh, my brand book is pretty obvious for me, but like when I want pink because I like pink, uh, mm, is that something also useful? 
maybe it is a good conversation starter because yeah. we have some uh, some points to grasp to ask you why pink. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. And then um, we can go on. Uh, once I choose a design, I think it's uh, good to go in that direction. Mm, you take it and you refine it according to the feedback exactly. that I have given you, yeah. right? So. Mm, is there any space for uh, for feedback with that uh, re more refined uh, design, or is it basically uh, something that we just go on with to the next stage? No, the feedback is crucial for that part because um, this is the time of a better quality conversation because okay. we have example and we have a common ground to to talk about that developing design mm -hmm. and um, this is also the very good time to maintain being on the same page so we need honest and very constructive criticism mm -hmm. and uh, that is not taken personally but it's taken as a you know very valid input towards uh, making better projects example and um, this is very big uh, do is to be certain and sure about the uh, design we are finishing that phase with because after that yeah. we are closing some uh, some very important stage we are closing the looks part and we are moving towards uh, working on mechanical stuff and all the insights of uh, of our uh, projects yeah okay so um when you said honest uh, uh, criticism i assume that since uh, 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 we are moving on to to, to mechanical design I, I shouldn't keep anything to myself like uh, thinking to myself i'm sure they'll change that or uh, i hope they'll change that or whatever oh <laughs> it's windy up in here um, may, so anything that comes to my mind I should state it. Right? Yes, exactly. We should discuss those fears, or maybe dis if you are hoping we are, uh, we will do something. Uh, tell us that you are hoping we'll do something, because uh, for us it made this uh, one uh, detail mm -hmm. might be the crucial for our idea of that design, and uh, we won't be able to guess what you are need until you all tell us what yeah. you really need. Yeah. Okay, once we go through that, we get to the mechanical um, stage. And what what do you do at this stage? Uh, we develop the, not how it will look, but we will develop how the object, the project will work like. So mm -hmm. we are focusing on all of the functional aspects of, uh, of the future product or of the object in general. Mm -hmm. And so we are developing... Uh, for example, how the parts of the housing will hold together, how the electronics will fit inside, and etc., etc. Mm -hmm. And this is the part that it's iterative. It takes time, and mm -hmm. it uh, takes a lot of prototypes to develop. So a big do, <laughs> and uh, very demanded by us do, is to be patient mm -hmm. and not to expect us to uh, hit the nail uh, in the first go, in the first hit. Okay, you mean for the first prototype? Yeah, right? the first prototype won't be perfect because uh, we are not uh, able to. For forecast all of the material requirements, all of the, um, for example, changing dimension of some components we put inside of our pr products and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So uh, it is an iterative process and uh, in, with each prototype we push the project further, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. I understand that the first prototype or the second or even maybe the third won't be exactly what we were aiming for, especially the more difficult a project is. Uh, but uh, I assume that at this stage the final prototype sort of will be something that I can go and manufacture. Uh, not really. Uh, it won't be the master copy for future production. It won't be a golden sample, but it will be a fully functioning prototype that will execute all of the demanded uh, functionalities. So this will be a great tool to uh, maybe talk with the uh, future subcontractors and mm -hmm. maybe to launch the uh, next step, uh, such as uh, DFM, which is designed for manufacturing. Okay, so the DFM is the next stage. So yeah. uh, the, the, the final prototype that we uh, get um, I shouldn't expect it to be um, like shelf ready or, or, or something like that. But 
it's the, the, the type of prototype I can go with to the manufacturer to talk about tooling and possibilities, what technologies to, uh, to use, right? Exactly. Uh, at, at this point, uh, the technology is already chosen. So uh, that prototype is uh, correct in terms of uh, demands of, for example, um, injection molding. Uh, but it's made with a surrogate technology that uh, doesn't require tooling on the or the production line. So it's, for example, milled or uh, 3D printed. Okay. Um, once I uh, take that prototype or, or, or you take that prototype and go with it to uh, the manufacturer uh, or a couple of manufacturers, uh, what are the do's and don'ts there when starting to work with a tooling company or with a manufacturer? Um, this usually happens uh, during the DFM, uh, which is Design for Manufacturing, and uh, this is the phase when we are uh, testing the ground and testing the possibilities of different vendors to see if they can deliver the quality and pricing or cost and technology we are looking for. And a uh, very uh, important part of that process is remembering that it is also iterative mm -hmm. and uh, it uh, brings another person or another company to the table uh, because um, different production plants or different uh, subcontractors have different demands regarding the uh, very small technological details mm -hmm. that will affect the uh, design or shape of the, uh, of, the, of the product in a small way, but we have to uh, think about them if we want to fight for the best possible quality. Okay, so um, uh, how do I talk to, to, to such a contractor or how do you talk to, to, to such a contractor to find one that is uh, suitable for me? Is it like just showing them a prototype and saying do this exactly like that and if they say no, I go to the next one and then to the next one until I find the perfect one? Mm, I think it's a, more of a conversation, like they're telling us that, uh, for example, some radiuses are too small they need bigger and then we ask how big and we are um, still engaged in the process to mm -hmm. not lose the design we worked so hard for because uh, we know um, how to um, make technically correct uh, designs and uh, we know that also um, some changes are necessary, for example, due to the industry demands, mm -hmm. but some of them are, um, don't have to be made. We don't have to sacrifice each styling feature uh, to make uh, the project super easy for manufacturing. Yeah, okay. So it's like the moment of balancing different, uh, different, I don't know, motivations from different sides. Okay. At the end of the uh, mechanical design stage, I, or we end up with a prototype that is not yet ready to be manufactured. Yes. You said it's uh, still made with some surrogate technologies. And we take it and go to a manufacturer or manufacturers, plural. Um, exactly. Yeah. What, how, how do we start that conversation? How do we approach that? Uh, okay. So at the beginning, we have to uh, accentuate that it's important to uh, hold to one method of production and because for that method of production the aforementioned prototype was made for and then we are aiming to work with uh, the vendors or manufacturers that we are trust uh, yeah sure. period this is very important because we know their quality we know their demands so this is a very a good starting point for the future cooperation so preferably once we have already worked with yeah. and we know that they will um, deliver what, yeah. what if i what if well, with this project we don't have such a um, Okay, uh, so then it's important to verify them. So exactly, so for example, when they're telling us that uh, some uh, solutions are impossible in, uh, to make by them, uh, we need to ask maybe some two or three different vendors uh, to kind of test the ground and see if it's yeah, to correct. see if they if say it's impossible, impossible for them or for them impossible or in general. In general. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so this is a very good uh, distinction. And um, also we should always uh, verify the... Um, the fact if they are able to meet our requirements because uh, home appliances are doesn't have any special requirements mm -hmm. but uh, everything is different when you are making the medical products because medical products have different class of being medical products <laughs> and they demand different uh, surroundings during the production different level of cleanliness and stuff mm -hmm. like that so these are the very important uh, qualities to have okay for those vendors and when we decide on a vendor, well, how do we even decide that we go with the vendor? Do they um, just tell us, 
yeah, we'll do it, and we say, okay, let's do it, or do we, like, order a sample batch, or how, mm. how does it work? Um, a good thing is always to ask for some samples, or maybe there are um, some uh, products that they already produced, manufacture, or assembly, because that's also a thing. So, therefore, we can kind of understand what they mean by the best quality possible, for example. So, mm -hmm. this is also a, a good do. Uh, usually it doesn't happen overnight because uh, all of the uh, starting the cooperation with uh, some vendor uh, on the law level or the law platform, mm -hmm. uh, it can take months because these are the uh, sometimes very big investments. So uh, both sides need to feel very safe in that uh, cooperation. So mm -hmm. uh, it usually takes some time. You, you mentioned um, assembly, um, so that's also something the manufacturer takes care of, right? Sometimes do. Uh, it is always. It is also a thing that it's good to be certain about because uh, some vendors are only uh, producing the injection mold parts, and then we have to collect them and br bring them to a different facility that will assemble those. I don't know housings with the electronics that are inside. Yeah, okay. So this is also the big part of the DFM to make sure that whole, all of the logistics and all of the supply chain is uh, there in order. Okay, so best to work with vendors I know and rely on. If no such are available, I should definitely get a second or third opinion. Yeah. And even when I decide that one is better than the other, I should verify where, whether what they say about themselves is actually um, true. Yeah, exactly. At the end of the DFM stage, we have a vendor picked and we do a, a test batch with them. Yeah. And let's say the first batch comes out and I'm not satisfied. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. How should I react? What should I do? Okay, at first, don't panic. Only ideas are perfect. And uh, even um, even this stage of the product uh, of the project can be iterative mm -hmm. because we are creating totally new injection molds, for example, and we need still a few batches and some time to tweak it, change it a little bit and fight for the quality that we are demanding. And uh, it's, it's quite natural because we are developing the new production line, we are developing new supply chain, so mm -hmm. That this will take some work and this yeah. will take some maybe thinking about compromising and uh, again sure. lining up priorities between yeah. costs, between the end price, between the quality mm -hmm. and quantities of those mm -hmm. uh, product batches. Yeah, compromise, compromise, compromise. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Okay, but it's still important to, to remember that even though you, you uh, one might think that, okay, everything is set, let's just go. No, it's still an iterative process. We need to, just as we needed to prepare the product, we need to prepare the production line. Yeah. And the manufacturer can do a lot on their on their own when preparing for the first batch. But True. then after they've made their basic sort of uh, work, we um, have a more hands-on approach for the process because we see the batch samples and, yeah, and we can exactly. give feedback. And uh, we cannot forget that this is not the last step in the life cycle of the product because we are just producing something and yeah. then we have to sell it. Mm. And uh, it's also a good idea to think about it during the uh, supervision of the production because uh, high quality product can be, for example, rarely returned, rarely fixed and stuff oh, like that. So yeah. the price of the production and the quality of production can influence the okay. um, all the business runnings in the, yeah, in the so, company later on. So I should also keep in mind that maybe uh, uh, choosing a uh, less expensive vendor won't always be the best business decision because I might have more uh, returns. For yeah, example. for example. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I understand it. Okay, cool. Um, I think we went um, through the whole process uh, at this point and we've covered quite a lot of do's and don'ts. Um, some might have been maybe a bit obvious for, for us, but from experience, like you mentioned to me before, they're often not for someone who is not in... In the process. Uh, yeah, in the On process, the doesn't basis, have yeah. experience with developing new products. So I hope we have managed to clear some questions for, yeah. for the people who are uh, uh, listening. Want to do some design doing. Thanks Thank for you. the talk. Thank yeah. you.